It's been an unforgettable sunny summer, which has been great for the region's tourism industry, but also for some of its most threatened wildlife species too. Nick Baker has been to a Devon nature reserve to see how some of the UK's rarest creatures are turning a corner after years of decline. Marsland Nature Reserve in North Devon. Over 500 acres, the largest run by the Devon Wildlife Trust and, I reckon, one of the best. This bridge marks the border of Devon and Cornwall. Stand in the middle and you're straddling both counties. But this place isn't just a geographical landmark. Now the management of this fantastic reserve is largely for some of my favourite animals, the butterflies. Now they've taken a real hammering in recent decades, modern agricultural practice and habitat loss being the main culprits. But here at least, most species seem to be bucking the trend. This is one of the target species, the small pearl border fritillary. The pearl border refers to the markings on the wings a beautiful insect that suffered a 20% decline in the last 10 years. This is the very similar pearl-bordered fritillary. Quite difficult to tell them apart, it's seen an even more dramatic decline, 42% in a decade. But here they both appear to be doing well. This pearl border is feeding on the bugle they encourage to grow here, and they are breeding. These are pearl border caterpillars and they're feeding on their larval food plant, dog violets. For the species to survive, both bugle and violets need to be plentiful. These rare shots were taken by the local warden Gary Pilkington. They show a female small pearl border being fought over by a group of males. Eventually one wins out and mates. Now go back a hundred or so years and our woodlands would have been continuously harvested for various woodland products. The process of coppicing, cutting down trees and then harvesting the regrowth was widespread. Now what this does is it creates this wonderful patchwork of various stages of plant regeneration. And that means you get everything from bare soil, flower rich clearings all the way through to the mature trees themselves. And that's exactly what many of our butterflies thrive on. With no commercial wood cutting anymore, in winter the truss clears the scrub and cuts down the trees. They also keep the bracken at differing heights, creating different levels of shade for flowers like the vital bugle and violets. The idea is to always have some part of the reserve in perfect condition for breeding butterflies. The pearl borders like a kind of more open environment, bare earth full of bracken litter and violet plants. The small pearl borders are happier on the lusher greensward in the valley and it's a lot of work to keep both habitats in tip-top condition. If you'd come here in the late 80s you'd have probably found a handful of small pearl bordered and pearl bordered fritillaries. This year, last year, the years before we've been recording numbers in the high 200s wow. of both species. I guess the big question is, it's nice to see butterflies, but why is it important to see these butterflies? Well, I need to stress, it's, it's not just about a couple of butterfly species, but they are very good indicators of the wider wildlife that exists in this place. And they're also very easy to count as well, so they make for good monitors, if you like, of the health check of this place. Great to hear these beautiful insects are doing well. But it's not just the fritillaries. The walk down to the coast takes you through a rich mixture of habitats. This woodland edge is full of commoner butterfly species, such as the ringlet. The reason for its name is kind of obvious. It's a subtle velveteen beauty, easily overlooked. The reserve is also renowned for these hoverflies. This one seems to be hoovering up every last piece of pollen on this hogweed plant. This one, known by the Latin name Ringia campestris, has an unusually long proboscis, unfurling it to take nectar from the flag iris. But you do have to be careful with your natural history. This looks like a bee, but it won't sting. It is in fact a fly, a bumblebee mimic. And of course, for comparison, the real thing. 
Now on this reserve, you're never far from the sight and sound of water, and that means it's a pretty good place to be if you're a dragonfly. Something like 19 different species have been recorded here. A little bit of time spent by a pond like this, and you should be amply rewarded. This is an extraordinary sight, a southern hawker dragonfly freshly emerged from its nymphal case, or exuvia. Beauty from a rather surprising beast. Early in the spring, you might catch this, red damselflies mating. And in June, a mature member of the species basks in the sun at the edge of the pond. The purity of the air and the water doesn't just make it a haven for dragonflies. The woods are literally covered with rare lichens, including this one, the golden hare. Devon is one of the few counties that still has a colony. And there's proof of the purity of the water here, with perhaps the jewel in the water conservation crown, two otter cubs. These rare images were captured by Gary the Warden. They almost seem to be grooming one another, before one gives its sibling a playful nip. What a special place this is. In the 50s, otters came close to extinction through most of their range, thanks to the overuse of pesticides. The West Country, however, has always been a stronghold. Now, these are the woods that uh, basically follow the path of the stream all the way down to the shore here. And if you're a bird watcher like me, these places are brilliant on one hand, because you know they're there, because you can hear them, but they're a bit frustrating on another level because you can't see the things, or if you do want to see them, you have to work the place really hard. This wren, one of our smallest birds, might be a juvenile. You can just make it out through the leaves, but you've got to be quick. A great spotted woodpecker dashes quickly up the trunk before disappearing. And a glimpse of a marsh tit, sadly a bird under severe conservation threat. Finally, after a two mile walk, the path emerges from the wood. <laughs> so if you follow the meanders of the stream downhill, this is what you get at the end of it. The whole landscape opens up into this incredible vista and yet another habitat. We've got maritime grassland and heathland here, which is absolutely fantastic. And for someone who's into your birds, with no trees to obscure the view, it's a little bit easier. Overhead the sound and sight of summer, a skylark, almost seeming to hover in the wind before plummeting to earth. And this boldly coloured cock yellow hammer is taking advantage of the plentiful insect life with a mouthful for the newly hatched chicks. A grey heron is flying along the valley from land to sea, doing in a minute what would take a walker most of the morning. We've almost seen a full set of habitats for wildlife today. We started off in the woodland. We worked our way through those beautiful managed glades and the coppiced areas along the bank of the stream. We got the pools for the dragonflies. Then we came out here with the maritime heath. And then, as if that isn't enough, we've also got the beach itself, the intertidal zone. Each one of those individual habitats supports its own unique range of wildlife species. And of course, let's not forget those small pearl border fritillaries that we filmed right at the top of the valley there. They're also found right down to the tops of the cliffs. This place is fantastic. That's all from us tonight, but we'll be back next Monday with more stories and investigations from around the southwest. We'll see you then. Yeah.